everyone and welcome to this month's this is june 2022 for our terrapin technology monthly webinar we thank you for joining in with us and today we have uh, an exciting little discussion that we're going to be involved in and want to share with you we have uh, the folks from doc style uh, joining us uh, we have chris and jasmine that are uh, joining in with us today to talk about your styles and what your firm is doing about them. And we always kind of joke, we're not talking about fashion, which we all know that. Uh, we're, we're talking about something far more important when it comes to working your law firm. But let's go ahead and jump into it. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Chris and Jasmine. And maybe Chris, if you can get us started, uh, just tell us a little bit about Doc Style and uh, you know how you got started, and, and Jasmine, a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, sure. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it, Joe. Um, so my name is Chris. I'm from Doc Style, and what we envisioned many years ago was the ability to style a document. And when we mean style, we mean to structure the formatting inside the document automatically and as close to automated a fashion as possible. Microsoft Word can do everything, but because it can do everything, it can get overly complicated and difficulties arise when you have larger uh, page count documents. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to try to address some of those complexities inside the platform to automate them and make the, the experience using Microsoft Word a little bit more streamlined. And to do that, the foundation is building styles properly because so much of what you do in Word is built on styles. Well said. And then how, how did you uh, how did you get involved with uh, in Doc Style? What's your background? So I spent about 15 years uh, doing uh, consulting and network build outs for law firms. Uh, I had constantly run into problems and challenges and how do we do this and how do we do that and how do we become more efficient? Um, you know, the majority of, of the legal community um, does not have a very strong grasp of Microsoft Word, so they're figuring it out as they go along. And those challenges coupled with the inexperience and the novice nature of, of using Word um, just, just really complicate what shouldn't be so hard. And so the idea was to try to help by addressing the inconsistencies that you can run into. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Jasmine, what about yourself? How did you, uh, what's your background? So my background is in uh, legal. I was a legal secretary for a uh, number of years and a document uh, specialist for about 17 years. I went into, um, well, it's now called document uh, processing, but it used to be called word processing. And uh, I was a word processor for about 17 years. And I really learned a lot about Microsoft Word and how documents should be styled and how they should function if, if properly formatted. And um, I started uh, working with DocStyle about two years ago as a beta tester. And uh, and now I'm here, and I'm really excited. So uh, Doc Style is 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 a wonderful product. Um, I really believe in it. I, I I mean, there's nothing like it on the market. Um, I mean, there's others, but we're the best, right? <laughs> uh, we we try to make it easier um, than it needs to be. You know, w with respect to Word, Word can be if you do not know Word, uh, you just don't. You, you're not going to use it to to its full potential and that's what doc style does it try it it takes out that a little bit of that learning curve of knowing or how deep you should go into a word document and how much you should know so we try to simplify the process very nice i, I know in our discussion and talking about things and, and i think this is this will relate to those that are listening in and watching this as well uh your both of your backgrounds and working with law firms, both as you know, document specialist trainer to Jasmine and working in that, uh, which I, I can really relate to. And then Chris, you have quite the IT background um, as well. And so both of those coupled with your knowledge of legal, 
uh, I think is very interesting and uh, adds a personal touch to the product that you're that you that you represent and I think is really good. Yeah, you know, Chris, you talked a little bit about you know yourself and doc style and you know and we have the screen here talking about your philosophy and basically in trying to help because we're all interested in being more efficient. We don't, no one likes to be able to lose money. And we all know that doing things manually, while in the past uh, was a very easy way to accomplish things, we, we always kind of knew in the back of our mind that it's not the most efficient way to accomplish things. And as time goes on, I think that that efficiency and the loss of time and let's be honest, money, because time is money, mm -hmm. uh, exponentiates as things get more complex, uh, things are, are more electronically delivered and driven, uh, there's more emphasis on it. So uh, there's much to be said and to be learned about how all of this works. So why don't we talk about, and I, I forgot to say that we, uh, we're going to turn our cameras off here. I know we kind of left them on while we're talking here. Uh, typically, we do turn them off so we don't uh, distract you. I, I use that a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn my camera off so we can focus on what we have to show and what we have to talk about uh, when it comes to uh, the fashion or styles of your documents and with uh, document cleanup. So I'll go ahead and turn mine off. Uh, the, the next thing we kind of wanted to talk about was what, you know, how we move forward after this when it comes to uh, your documents and doc style. And, and there's a lot of areas we could focus on. And so, uh, Jasmine, you picked these two areas, cleanup and formatting. Correct. How would you, why, why would you pick those as being the most important? Well, you need to start with the fundamentals, right? So yeah. the fundamentals in, in Word are, uh, especially with, with respect to legal documents, the most important two things that you need in, in legal documents is you need to make sure that your document is properly formatted, but before you can format it, it needs to be cleaned up. And uh, the term dirty document has been used for a long time. It may seem outdated, but it's the best way to describe a document that, that has you know, so many styles, so much coding in the background that you just, you know, on on the screen, the document will look great, like there's nothing wrong with it. And then something will happen or uh, you, you try to print it and, 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 you know, paragraphs are collapsing into each other and all these different things, all these weird things are happening and you just don't understand why it's happening. And it's because, you know, it's not properly cleaned up. The coding is 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 interfering. There's something wrong. With, yeah, yeah, there's something wrong with the document. And, the, and it's not always easy to pinpoint it and figure out what the heck is going on. And yeah, so, that is so, so true. <laughs> yeah. So we need to kind of like start from the beginning, right? So sure. this is like the WP 101 is, you know, you have your styles. This is what we're going to talk about in, in this uh, webinar. We're going to talk about styles, why they're needed, uh, what are dirty documents, and, you know, how to triage, how to, how to uh, format, properly format documents, how to use your own firm styles or house styles, uh, and how to apply those styles using doc style to, to kind of um, expedite the process. Because, as you said, Joe, you know, time is money. And, it, um, it is. We, we, yeah, and we need to figure out a way to be able to do the things that, you know, we need to do to get these documents up and running and out to the clients in, in a timely fashion. Because now we're, you know, it's not back in the day where, you know, the courts used to close at five and, you know, 430 was the, the crunch time. Now it's it's any time, you know, and, and with the different time zones and, and you know, collaborating with other, um, you know, clients from across the world, you kind of have to, it's almost like a 24 seven type of job. So very true. You, can, you, you have to, you have to know, and you don't know what you don't know. Right, Joe, you said that. To that's me. It's it. exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right. That was a phrase I gave you yesterday yes, uh, and yes. how that works. And the cleanup is, you know, I, I, our audience knows about, uh, knows about that. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and jump into it because, you know, many times the question will come up, well, is the document worked fine yesterday now? Why is it not working today? And, yes. you know, oh, we, we reuse and we repurpose documents all of the time. Correct. And you mentioned about these things that are there that we may not 
necessarily know that are being used, but they're being used whether we know it or not, and they can cause Correct. problems. So to kind of set the stage, not, not that we want to spend a lot of time on this because uh, I even have a class, a one hour class on just using styles in Microsoft Word. In a nutshell, yeah. what do we need to know here? Well, you need to know about styles. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the reason why is because a style, a, what a style is, is a style are also called paragraph styles. I mm -hmm. like to use, I, I like to use the analogy of a last name, right? So if you, if you have, you know, if you're married, you have children, you know, you have your family unit, they're, they're all, your last name are all the same, right? So let's say that your last name is Smith. Then anyone associated, every paragraph that's a Smith, that's a style, right? But they're all related. That's how I kind of like try to oversimplify what a style is. So a paragraph name is a style, like a last name. They belong together. They're grouped together as a unit, right? So if you see, if you open up, um, it, why does it matter? Okay, so the question is, why, why, does it, why does it matter? Matters because if you reuse the same style name and you make a formatting change in one style, it's going to affect all the other related paragraphs with that same name that's, that's right. why it's important that's why why it's important and if you can um advance to to the next slide you'll see a perfect example of that okay so in this in in this you know um example we have body text one and body text one is has bold and underlined and you know it's flush to the left it looks like a subtitle but then it's being reused again as a paragraph so that's a red flag you should not be using the same style name for two different uh formatted pieces of text in your word document because now let's say we change body text one to be like the paragraph and you and and you have the styles automatically update on you it's going to make that introduction bold underlined and flush to the left be un unbolded, ununderlined, and still flush to the left, but it's a different formatting set. So the same style name should not be used unless you're using it properly and they're all going to that that unit, that paragraph grouping is going to remain the same. So this is something that I see all the time. It happens. Why does it happen? Because we just don't know any better, right? Yeah. You're looking at the document. You're thinking, this is cool. You know, let me just hit enter and, and type what I need to type. And then your document, for example, let's say it's 300 pages. You make a change in one section. The whole thing is bold, underlined, even paragraphs. And you're just like, what did I do? Right? Uh, right. And that's, or many, that's what happens. Yeah. Many a times I see this will pop up when people are doing table of contents or things like that, page numbering, and uh, something will, will be, there'll be something missing from the table of contents. You're like, well, it's right there. Why is it not showing up? Or why is the format right. different? Why do the page numbers, why are they not consistent? Correct. All these things play in, play into that. Correct. So, you know, th thank you for helping to kind of uh, demystify that a little bit for us. It it, mm -hmm. it is a subject that a lot of times, um, I, and we'll be honest on this, many of us will kind of glaze over when it comes right. to using this. But in all honesty, Word has been using styles without us even knowing it, or maybe we did know it, uh, for quite a long time. So it, it's right. a matter of we're just kind of catching up with what Word has had and allowed mm -hmm. us to do and just making more efficient use of it. Right. Now, right. that takes us into that takes us into an, another area here, which we, again, the styles is kind of leading up to this. Correct. Um, what, what's, what's going on with these dirty docs? Okay, so a dirty document is a document that's been passed around and collaborated with uh, between clients and opposing counsel and in-house, even in-house. Um, you can you can pass along uh, a dirty document and not even realize it if you're copying and pasting from another document, right? Repurposing the language, and mm -hmm. you're just copying and pasting from an in-house document right into the document you're working on, and all of a sudden it just stops behaving, right? It, it's not working <laughs> as it's supposed to, so I call it a misbehaving document. And um, 
the reason why that happens is because you know you have different different styles and different coding from different documents and and a dirty document is basically a document that has uh for lack of a better uh phrase 50 million styles that's what i call it 50 million styles right yeah so i we did a webinar not too long ago where we talked about uh doc you know some basic document cleanup things that you can do and you know i think kind of like a doc er for yeah, the 11th hour and you're trying to get something out. And right. one of the things I talk about is, you know, a normal copy and paste, and you alluded to this, you copy and paste from one document or you reuse another document and delete the contents or update it. Right. And you didn't realize that normal copy and paste uh, brought stuff over. Uh, you thought Correct. it just brought over the text and it's bringing styles, possibly track changes, embedded fonts. Right. Um, you know, and eventually all of these little children here are getting introduced in the playground and someone's going to start crying and your document's yeah. just going to go, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly, it's just, it's, it's going to throw its hands up. Somebody's going to fall right. off the merry-go-round and cry. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yes, so, all of these analogies are coming from my childhood. I don't know why they just are. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> okay. Are. I mean, over, you know, simplifying the process makes it a little bit easier to understand. So uh, I, I appreciate the analogies because I use analogies as well. So how do we figure out whether or not a document is dirty? Easy. You look at the styles pane, right? So the yep. styles yep. pane is where all your styles live. And uh, you can preview, manage, and customize styles in Word, but we're not going to do that in this webinar. We're just going to introduce you to what to look for. What are the red flags? Um, exactly. So, so the, the, the style pane is a big, a big area where you can help identify that and know what am I looking at. And, and this is something for, you know, all of our word perfect users. And this was a way, you know, we're not, we're not telling you there's a reveal codes, but this is right. about as close as you can get to revealing some of the codes uh, when it comes to Microsoft word documents. Right. So in order to access the style pane, um, if you could just go back. To oh, sorry, the, I advanced too quickly okay. there. Yeah, yeah. So the styles pane, uh, if you click on the little uh, the little arrow, is it an arrow? It's yeah, I guess it's like a little cube. Yeah, it's arrow. like the it's the it's the uh, the pop out menu for the for the styles. And usually it's right. off of the the home ribbon bar tab. There's a section for styles Correct. and oh, right. uh, there's and, a little dropout button there. Correct. So that's how you 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 can reveal the styles because most most of the time they're not on and you just don't see them. So if you turn that on now, you can move on to the next slide. That's where you're going to see your styles. OK, as you can see in, in this view, you got your Z prev, whatever that is, your headings one through nine. Those are your defaults. Then you have article article single you know that's what i call 50 million styles right, right. so <clears throat> a lot of times these styles are just not being used they're not really active in the document so what happens when you copy and paste this is this right it copies in styles from a previous document and throws it in your styles pane to kind of say to you hey you know uh if you want to use this you can use it but what happens here is that once you have too many conflicting styles, your form, your your software programs stop working because it doesn't know what you want. You can tell it, hey, I want you to pull heading one. OK, I, I, th that's where my TOC styles live. You know, I, I have it set up as heading one through nine and I just want to pull in the heading styles and you can tell it that. But if you have conflicting software programs if you have different programs that that you use for toc it doesn't know unless you tell the go into the software program and tell it listen i only want you to pull in heading but it won't it'll put it pull in the all the articles and the this and the that and that's where people <laughs> run into trouble right and you're and like, like what is going on yeah and, and but but the 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 styles aren't being used OK, they're they're just kind of phantom. So they're like phantom styles. So one of the things that, you know, doc style does, which is such a cool feature is um, and if you can advance to the next slide is, yes, it will it will delete all your unused styles from the document. And what so that this does. Is a, so this is like a cleanup tool you have right off of the 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 bar to help yes. 
take care of this specific situation. You know, all right. the junk that's in the trunk that you're not using, right. this is what's going to easily help you to just whoosh, take care of it. Right. Correct. So what we what we have what we can do here is we can remove those unused styles from the document. We can take them out and you know and what that does is it'll shrink all of the the styles in that styles pane that and delete them and you only have the styles that you are using in that specific document so right. that that's that's just step number one of triaging a document and it really um it, it really does help i've used it many times with many documents that are just like out of control and i'm like okay well let, let's look at the styles pane and i see i see i see the red flag of 50 million styles and i use the delete unused styles from the document now Doxel has two ways of doing this you can do it from the active document which is a little slower or you could do it in a copy best practice for me would be doing it in a copy only so that you can compare the two um um documents and see okay what was taken out right you so yes. you want a frame of reference you you want that that master document to see what it is that it took out and how and you can see the difference and then you can just move on from there so that's what, that's that's kind I'm of sorry? a best practice when it comes to that too we when we've yeah. talked about in the past about you know working with documents doing table of contents uh and etc making changes to to repair things and it's always better to make a copy. That way you have something to refer back to in, in case something goes wrong. You have right. something to fall back on and say, okay, this Correct. is this is how it looked before. Uh, right. You know, many times in the past, I'll print it to a PDF or physically print the documents. So they have a visual reference to go by um, as well. Now, what about, uh, you know, we're talking about here a, a triaging the documents. Uh, what if you want to, you know, create, you want to do something fresh and new. How, how oh, can that help? Sure. So we have a feature called Create Clean Document. And Create Clean Document um, will strip your document of all the coding. The cool thing about Create Clean Document is it will not change your formatting. That means all your bold or your underlines, all your italics, that will not come off, which is huge when you well, have let, let a very... Let me get this right. So you're saying that this is like taking the text of the document and doing a paste special as plain text into a document. But the difference is it not only does it just bring the text over because, you know, in that, in that reference, it would just, I have to format everything. Right. You know, what was bold and underlined or not using right, right. this, it will actually yes. keep all that. It'll keep all that. And it'll also keep the, the paragraph indentations. So if, if it's, if it's, block text it'll keep the block test text if it's indented so that's, by that's a pretty big deal because a lot of times what will keep people from having to you know let's say re, not just repurpose a document but clean a document when they know okay this document is it's it's beyond repair so right. I, I know that i really should just take this content and put it into a, a you know a new clean document you know container document Mm -hmm. But I don't have time, nor, nor do I want to have to go and reformat and redo everything. Obviously, if you're using right. styles, it'd be a little easier. But this, this keeps right. all of that. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, or at least you, you know where to reinvent it. Correct. So, you know, in, in, in the Create Clean Document dialog box, there's a couple of things that, that I like to check off. Um, and they're checked here. So it's the remove the blank paragraph marks, you know, all the extra you know, returns that, that you hit that you don't, you know, you don't necessarily need and you don't have, you don't want to sit there or, you know, and delete manually or do a global. So this will remove the extra par blank paragraph marks. Um, if you have leading tabs, you know, when people tend to, they don't use the ruler or style to uh, move the paragraph indentation. So they hit the, you know, the tab you know, a couple of times to get it to where the, where you want it to be, um, that'll remove that if, if you're looking for a cleaner um, paragraph. And uh, sometimes, you know, it'll remove the text in the header and the footer. It'll remove the tab stops. It's just a couple of features here that, that are really crucial when you're cleaning up a document. And, Very nice. Um, yeah. So, so and then it, it gives you, it 
Yeah, so it gives you, like, you know, like we looked at before, you know, like a, a a button to click to clean things up or to possibly take it a little further if you want to. But the relative ease that it does this and presents itself is real key because a lot of times we don't want to be overwhelmed with a lot of options, either because, you know, let's be honest, technology can be overwhelming or more Correct. importantly and probably more frequently, I just don't have time to go through all those options. So can you give me something that I can... I knew it'll do a set number of things and it'll get things to a, uh, you know, a, a level that is mm -hmm. presentable. Yeah. Correct. And, and you can also attach uh, a template to this. So let's say you have a set of styles that, um, that you use, you, you know, your firm styles or house styles, and you really want to use your own stuff. You can, you know, click the browse button and attach a template and, then all the styles that you know, th that you use in your firm or house, uh, depending on on uh, whether it's this side of the pond or Europe, um, it, it will it will bring in the styles that that are in that template, so that you can use your own style. Some people are you know really gung ho. I want to use my style that I called I don't know a you know body text special right. or whatever you know it, it will bring those in so that you can use them in your clean new document now one thing i want to do mention which is a really cool feature of doc style is um it will clean a document and keep if you choose to do so comments and track changes i've gotten this request before you know when i was in a firm uh, a big firm and and it, a document will come in from a client or the attorney and they would say Listen, I want this cleaned up, but please don't accept the changes. Don't remove the comments because I need to know, you know, what it is that that so and so said. And that would be that was really hard because that would be there very hard. Any, yeah, there's nothing out there that that can do this. Doc Style does. Okay, so it will remove all the unnecessary coding, but it'll keep your track changes. It'll keep your comments so that you can start fresh from a clean document, but keep the, the, the necessary information that you need that's crucial. So very that's nice. just something that, that's just awesome. And that's a, that's a very unique uh, a unique feature that you guys had in your tool to be able to do that. Now, I, normally best practice is you don't want to be carrying around a lot of track changes in your document, but that's that right. doesn't mean that you're not going to have the situation come around where you have a document that needs to be cleaned up and you need to preserve those things. So Correct. that's... That's key because many a times in the past we've been like, well, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing we can really do. We're going to have to clean this up and get it usable. We have to right. basically wipe that out. So that right. really does and, help. And, right, and and I'm not going to, you know, promise that it'll always work that way because there are some some documents that are just beyond, uh, you know, the situation where it's like it's not behaving. It's just it's just the way it is. The best practice is to accept the changes and start fresh. True, and, true. But those are usually but, the documents that will end up on our webinar where we use them as examples of things that have gone yeah. really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they happen. They they do yeah. they do happen. And in all honesty, that's you know that's the honest truth about these things. We want to be able to mitigate uh, the problems. It's not a, uh, a an end all to every document corruption or issue that's right. going to come up. Right. But, but a major a major part of that is being able to you know try to do that retain some of the information right uh in the in the styles and whatnot now right, because you, you don't know unless you try it right right so it's, if you try it and 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 it's working great score you know what i mean we we can and 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 i've had that experience where um where we've done that where we've kept the the, the uh, track changes we've kept the comments and and the document and then we cleaned it and it worked beautifully and and the client was extremely happy so it it does depend on the document and how much it has been passed around um but but the feature is is very unique to us and i just think it's the coolest thing so it, it, it's very unique it was one of the things that caught my eye about uh, the the document cleanup portion of of your tools uh that work with the documents. Now, we, you know, we talked about styles, we talked about cleanup, obviously what they were talking about formatting of documents. Right. Why don't this kind of transition a little bit? And I, I'll just make a note. I know that we're getting close to our 30 minutes. So I hope our audience, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to go a little longer than our 30 minutes, but I think it's uh, going to be highly useful for you to kind of see this. 
And uh, obviously, if you run out of time, we're going to be we'll post it to our YouTube channel so you can watch this later if uh, you have something you have to go and do and revisit this later. But let's go ahead and talk about the next one here. And this is specifically how the the doc style tools help you with formatting a document. So this kind of goes into the or uh, changing gears from you know, the triage and, and doing something that's kind of uh, reactive to a document mm -hmm. that's misbehaving. And this is more of, we're going to create a document from scratch based on best practices, templates, and et cetera, uh, kind of building on what we talked about with styles. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So what are the benefits of a properly styled document? Um, Good question. And, and we can talk about this a lot. <laughs> we right. can really do we can, How much this, coffee this do you have? Is, yeah, exactly. This alone, okay, could could be a very very long webinar. But we're just going to focus on on some main ones, the the ones that that um that attorneys usually uh, want to focus on. And one of the things that uh, we want to focus on is generating a table of contents. Uh, generating a table of contents when you have a properly styled Word document is so easy. Um, a huge you know, time saver too. Right, a huge time saver. So if you have a properly styled document and then you go to run a, a table of contents, it'll just do what it's supposed to do. It'll pull in your heading. It'll pu pull in your, your uh, the, the style. Like if you have a, a number with it, you know, like, like uh, article one, whatever, um, without bringing in the paragraphs, right? So that's what happens sometimes. If you right click and you hit update TOC, it'll bring in the paragraph along with, you know, with the heading style. And you're like, no, I don't want that. And then you have to sit there and manually clean up a table of contents. So when you have a, a when the, the, when the Word document is properly formatted, you don't run into that issue. Right. Correct. And the second thing is that when you edit a document, um, having a properly st styled document helps you to edit a document without the issues of formatting changing on their own. Like I, I like I said in the prior example in cleanup, you know, when you have when you're using both the same style for different formatting paragraphs that, you know, it'll it'll change throughout the whole document. So having separate styles for separate paragraph formatting and TOC, those two things are huge and time savers. Right. Um, so that could be your so, numbering in your in your document, whether that's a, a pleading document or a, a, you know, a normal a letter or contract that you're doing, table of contents. Each of those areas can have uh, different styles or save formatting for them to make it real easy to apply them through the document. Now, in, in doc styles, it has a window. I think we have a screenshot here. Yeah. <clears throat> on you have it. And this kind of demystifies the style process because your tool makes it real easy to be able to identify, you know, what what you want to use, how you want to be formatted and, and setting those up, which I thought was very unique as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't so, yeah. an overly complicated little window. Right. So it, it basically it, in this, in this window um, it's, we have style sets, right? And the style sets are set to whatever style you, you want it called. Like if you want your heading levels to be tied to your headings, one through you know, one through six in, in this example, then you, you set that, right? You have your, your numbering uh, program or style or, you know, native word heading styles mm -hmm. one through nine. Um, and you've already set that up and you just want to tell it, Hey, anytime you see a heading level one, call it heading one, and it'll apply that, that numbering. So we've taken the, the, we've taken the liberty of once you point the style to the uh, paragraph that you want to apply it to, it'll automate it. It will apply. You can apply your own firm styles, your own house styles. And, you know, you, all you have to do is just bring in a template. And, um, and once you, you set that up, you know, you can tell it you have to point to it. But once it's done, then you can reuse that. So you can save. That's these. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, because you know the, the big question that will come to mind 
I see this. I'm going to go, okay, this looks, this could be very easy if I'm not familiar with it. But the other question that's in my mind is, is this something I have to do every time for every document? And you just answered that, which is no. You you set this up once on how you want things to operate and be formatted, and they will be available moving forward. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every Correct. time for every document Correct. moving forward, which is a is a big deal. So, you know, it, it does take a, li- a little bit of setup, a little bit of right. setup. They, you know, using styles is forward thinking. I'm thinking ahead right. of how I want things formatted and it's going to, it's going to work this way. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have to go back and revisit that unless I need to make a change on what I had, you know, uh, identified what I, how I want things to look and how I want them formatted. So it saves a lot of time just by spending a little bit in the very, very beginning. Right now. So if you go back um, to the previous slide, the how to create and apply your own firm or house styles. So this is mm-hmm. the window. This is the previous window to get to the second slide um, window. So if you click on manage style sets, then you get the the next the, that window. Correct. So I just Got wanted it. to just yeah point that out. And uh, the previous, if you go go back one more. Okay. Um, what's cool about this is if you want to apply numbering just to the paragraphs you can do that um and it you know the first selection says update style names do not change formatting that just basically means you want your own firm names your own firm styles but you don't want the formatting to change um and then you just you know you you it's that's your default and then you have the update formatting based on a template that's if I've already done a template. I want it to look like my previous agreement. You know, you just dial that up and that's where you would reuse the style set that we create on the second window. I Got hope it. that's, that's not where too confusing. That's when yeah. the style set's right here. Right. Got it. Now, right. what what about when it comes to actually applying this in the document? Because we're kind of doing the setup here. It's like we're going down the court and we have everything set up for us. How do we actually, let's make the basket and apply these things. How do we do that? Okay. So if we move on to the how to apply styles. Okay. So to apply styles quickly, uh, you, you can click on style document and um, that's on the ribbon of the doc style ribbon. If you previously set up your firm or house styles in, in the managed style sets, which is the previous right there, right? That window. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just click on style document and you know you have your choices again. Do you want to remove the leading tabs? Like a little bit of cleanup. Um, but that will apply once you've set up your your style set. It will apply it for you. It will apply your paragraphs. It will apply your numbering, um, and it'll just do it in an automated fashion, just one shot. And and that is just you know. And and one of the cool features of this is the analyze and fix numbering issues. That will flag inconsistent numbering. You know how sometimes mm-hmm. you know we we go from five to seven and you're like what happened to six that the algorithm will pick that up and say hey uh i think you skipped something here and right and right. sometimes you don't catch that until you've you know you publish it to a pdf or printed it right and then right. the attorney finds it and you're like oh man why did i miss that right. or right. maybe you do catch it and you're like trying to figure out where it went uh there's a lot more to this Absolutely. Um, then, you know, the, we here we've t- again, we've talked about document cleanup, which is a huge, a huge, you know, help. And I, I would say we get asked questions on that um, all the time. Right. Styling your document and formatting it is another a biggie. Obviously, there's a lot more underneath and what can be done. Uh, it can be as simple or you can get as granular as as you want to. And then, you know, as you just talked about, there's there's other areas too about helping with the numbering and other areas of working in documents um, that are extremely valuable in making us more efficient with the use of our documents, reusing them so that we don't have Correct. to reinvent the wheel. And we know right. that we're doing so in a way that, yeah, that the document's not going to crash on us. You know, if the attorney mm-hmm. wants to work over the weekend, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to worry as much that I'm going to get an after hours phone call on that document and something's going to happen. Right. Uh, I also know the document's going to work for, you know, my client when I send it to them or if they send right. one, for, you know, to me and they were using, you know, WordPerfect 5.1, uh, you know, for, 
for Windows, an original version, and <laughs> you didn't know it. Or even, or even Google Docs. That's what's popular yeah. now. Google Docs. You go into, you go and you format. You know, you, you're like, oh, I, I, I'll just go into Google Docs and make the changes and send it back. You don't know what you're, you don't know what you're adding to that. You know, and, so and, and so then, true. Yeah. So then the other side will get it and go, what the heck happened? <laughs> you know, because, exactly. Again, you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> exactly. And we've all been in that that type of situation. It's uncomfortable. You're you're racing to try to, you know, meet a deadline or you know, the client's right. waiting on something. Right. There's 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 always something burning or an emergency. And these things usually happen at the worst possible moment. So the tools really help to mitigate those those issues very, very right. well. Jasmine, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, oh, hey, thanks for being the backup behind us. I, I know you, we, Jasmine and I were kind of uh, uh, just motorboating over all of this. There's so much to go through. Right. Uh, Chris and I have had uh, great conversations about uh, the product and uh, how, you know, how it's built and, uh, you know, the programming behind it, which is very, very interesting and well-written and a very clean uh, and concise and quick um, application as well. Yeah, if thank you, you very much, yeah, Joe. <clears throat> I, yeah, you're I welcome. Yeah, no, um, I, I've really enjoyed the conversations that we've had, and um, you know, it, it's it's nice to to talk with passionate people about the problems we're trying to solve. What you know, the one thing that I would want you know the, the attendees here who are listening in on the webinar to take away is that. You know, when it comes to doc style, um, the 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 algorithms and the engine that we wrote, it's about identifying what a paragraph is and grouping those paragraphs together. So we're doing the work of looking at the document as a whole and saying, here is numbering in a section. This, these are the heading one paragraphs. These are the heading two paragraphs. These are the level three paragraphs. And we're going to apply the following styles, whether you give us the styles to apply or we just name them whatever you decide to name them. We know what the paragraphs are. And that's when I said we started with trying to style a document in a single click. It was about being able to identify the entire document from start to finish and to be able to build all of these different features off of that concept. And so we then went into cleanup and we went into other areas with numbering and, and, and building into automation, but it's all centered around that core of just being able to say, okay, I have a document in front of me. I see 400 paragraphs and of those 400 paragraphs, these are the ones that are level one numbering. These are regular headings without numbering involved. This is centered text, which we would apply a title style to. That's how we do it. And so that all happens under the hood. And that's typically what someone with Jasmine's background would go in and do manually. And right. although she's very efficient because she's highly skilled, that still takes time and there's only so much you can get to. And there are those areas where those moments where you say, I got a deadline, I just need to create a table of contents. This document is is all in normal. And right. how can I get it done quickly? We can get you a working TOC by building styles automatically in under two minutes. And that is just what the whole concept was about. And right. that's the conversations that we've had, folks, when I'm talking with Chris. It's uh, it's amazing stuff. Is it AI or just good programming? Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> so it's, um, uh, it's, it's 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 a lot of logic. So it, um, documents don't change in terms of what we're looking for. They're just either uh, drafted well or not. So uh, I would call it heuristics. I would not call it artificial intelligence. We're not changing based on how we, you know, uh, the documents change uh, over time. We know what it should look like. We identify documents based on conditions, and then we apply that logic. And we've just been able to innovate a way to apply that logic in, in fractions of seconds. 
uh, where it normally in the past had taken minutes, m- tens of minutes, uh, like quickly. Much docking. longer than, yes, yeah. much longer than it was necessary or that you right. wanted it to. Um, I, I know we're running over time a little bit, and I, I appreciate everyone that's been hanging on to this. I, I did want to, while we had uh, our experts online here, and I I, I want to really reiterate, uh, they're very well trained and professional experts on this. Did you have any questions? There's a little chat window down there at the bottom. If you have a question, uh, feel free. We'll give it a few minutes here if you want to type something in, ask a question. Uh, just a note, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier because someone had asked this question, but I wanted to just restate it. We will be placing this on our YouTube channel. So if you want to watch this later and re, you know, go over it, listen to it, uh, and then maybe send us questions later on, you're more than welcome to do. But does anyone have any questions? Feel free. Type something down there. Let us know what you're thinking. Is there a scenario? Question about uh, how something would work. Something we can follow up on later. And you don't have to invent any questions. We'll just leave that out there. <laughs> I know some of you were asking why, and uh, were asking things while we were we were talking, and Chris was replying to those. Okay, well, that's all right. I just wanted to give the opportunity for those that were listening in. If you do have any further questions, I, uh, Chris, Jasmine, we we really appreciate you taking the time to have this discussion and, uh, and prepare for this. Uh, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, Jasmine and I, I know yesterday we had talked about a lot of different things. Chris and I have had discussions uh, a lot over... Uh, the the uh, the uh, annual ALA convention. We were down in Kissimmee, Florida, uh, for that, which was really really nice. If you have further questions, please uh, reach out to DocStyle. Uh, you can reach them at info at docstyle.net. Feel free to go to their website at www.docstyle.net. Uh, request a free demo. Uh, ask for more information, and that way you can get more in depth information and details about how this can help you. Uh, there's a plethora uh, of mo- of options that go much deeper and broader than what we were able to touch on in uh, our little webinar uh, today. Obviously, you can always reach out to us at info at terrapintechnology.com. We always appreciate you asking questions and letting us to help guide you through this technology and uh, be efficient and successful in your business. Jasmine, Chris, thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having us. It was really great. Yes, thank you very and much. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. And everybody, thank you for attending and hanging on to us for an extended session for our, our webinar for June. We look forward to next month. We'll have another interesting topic coming up real soon. Just keep an eye out for your inbox and we'll let you know what that is. Until then, we'll talk to you at our next webinar. Thank you.